Hi everyone, it's been two months since I got the Nova Precision Oven and I've tested most of the features so I want to share with you how this oven is working for me. First of all, a little bit about myself. I'm a pastry chef and during the past year I've been baking a lot from home. I've been looking for a convection oven or a combination oven that fits my small apartment kitchen so I can get better results with my baking projects. I have a traditional home oven without a convection setting and I've been struggling with uneven heating and temperature fluctuations. A convection oven is one that has a fan that can circulate the hot air in the oven and the combination oven is the one that has a steam feature that goes on top of the convection setting. Small combination ovens for the home are actually quite popular in Asia and normally has a microwave function built into it. But since the voltage is different, I've been hesitant to ship one from overseas. Currently in North America, there's not many choices in terms of this kind of oven, especially countertop models. And I've been eyeing this ANOVA ever since it was in the pre-order phase. Since this oven is still pretty new on the market, there's not many thorough reviews available online. So hopefully my experiences can help clear things up for you. First of all, the oven has a touch panel for settings. Over here is a Wi-Fi indicator, the mode of heating, the temperature control, and you can switch it to sous vide mode, which will give you a more precisely controlled temperature. The timer here and the probe setting. And here is the steam setting. And over at the end, we have the start and stop. I particularly like the timer because if you don't set a time, it'll show you how long it's been cooking since the oven's set temperature has been reached. However, the touch panel limits access to many of the oven's other features. If you want more options and greater control of the oven's functions, you'll need to download the ANOVA Oven app. Inside, we have three heating elements. The top that is exposed, the rear element, which contains the convection fan, and the bottom heating element, which is built in. You can choose to use a combination of heating elements and the fan speed through the app. But if you use the rear heating or the steam, the app will only allow you to have the fan on. There's a probe thermometer, which you can plug it in like this and stick this end into the roast. I put this feature to good use, making a beef wellington, inserting the probe during baking. I was able to have very precise control over the tenderloin's temperature even inside the pastry shell. The water reservoir for the steam function is here and you can fill it up from the top or you can open the lid like this. And you can remove the tank entirely like this. There's also a removable drip tray here that can catch any condensation. The oven also comes with two rack and a tray. The included aluminum sheet tray is the perfect fit inside the oven. However, it is thinner and flimsier than a standard kitchen half sheet tray. It also warps significantly when heated up while baking, sometimes with a violent pop. I would ideally like to use a half sheet tray, but it is slightly too large. So I typically use a quarter sheet tray instead of the provided tray. The size of this oven can also fit a Dutch oven like this. This is a 2.5 quart Dutch oven and although a bigger size can probably fit in the oven, the rack doesn't look like it can hold much more weight. I've baked a wide range of food, including eclair, sourdough bread, babka, and even milk puddings. All the functions seems to be working fairly well, and the temperature is precise, and it browns very evenly thanks to the convection fan. There are, however, a few main issues I've noticed. First of all, for sourdough, I follow the setting recommended on the app, which uses a sequence of oven settings. My crust does have micro bubbles and a beautiful color, but it's very thin and quite soft compared to the thicker, more well-done crust using my regular oven with a Dutch oven setup. I'm still working on adjusting the ANOVA temperature and settings to try to get my sourdough dialed in. 
Secondly, when I try to make Chinese steam buns, the steam function doesn't seem to be powerful or dense enough to prevent the skin from forming. The bun surface was drier and less soft compared to a traditional wok steamer setup. I also tried to dehydrate some citrus while leaving the door cracked as suggested by the manual. The light remains on the entire time. Unfortunately, even in the app, there's no way to control the oven light. So hopefully they can update the software to include this kind of additional control. One last nitpick I have is the exposed top heating element. Because of this oven's smaller size, the top is often covered in grease and splatter and is hard to clean. I wish it was enclosed like the bottom element, which is popular in combination ovens from Asia, so it can be wiped down more easily. All that being said, I really enjoy using this oven. I've had great success making desserts, especially the one that needs some steaming and precise temperature control. I've also had good results reheating fried food with a convection setting, reviving the crisp texture without drying them out. I'm still testing more things with this, so I hope I can provide another update in a couple of months. Remember to subscribe to my channel for updates and pastry recipes. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.